So you've downloaded the data, you've parsed the data, we've plotted some of the data. Um, now let's get an initial answer to where we think steps are, are occurring. So if you look at uh, this slice from 400 to 600, um, it looks possible that the steps are happening at each of these peaks in the accelerometer data. So let's write a quick method that will show us where the peaks are. Um, and instead of just counting, I actually want to return the indices where the peaks are occurring um, because that's going to let us later on plot points there. So I'm going to define uh, get peaks and I'm going to pass a list called data um, so that, that way I can get the peaks for, for different lists, like if I want accelerometer X versus Y versus something else. Um, so now I'll say, I'll, I'll loop over them all for i in range. And I want to start at index 1 and go up to the length of the data minus 1. Um, so I'm not going to visit the last element, and I'm not going to visit the first elements. And the reason why is because what it means to be a peak is for data i to be larger than data i minus 1. So I'm larger than my left-hand neighbor. And data i is larger than data i plus 1. So I'm larger than my two neighbors on either side. So if that's, uh, okay, so I need a list of peaks. So here I'll say uh, x peaks, let's call it peaks x maybe, is an empty list. So now I can say peaks x dot append i. So now I've recorded the index where I saw the peak. And at the end, I can return peaks x. So let's evaluate that. Great. And now I'll say peaks x equals get peaks. And I'll pass it uh, the accelerometer x data. Um, and because here I'm viewing a slice between, what was it, 400 and 600, I'm going to pass it the same slice from 400 to 600. Let's run that. OK, great. Um, so now if I wanted to, I could add those to the plot. So let's do plot, or let's do plt dot adding another plot. And I'm going to add uh, peaks x. And then let's add a list consisting of 0 times whatever the length of peaks x is. Um, so if you don't know what this is doing, this should create a list full of zeros whose length is exactly that. Um, and those are going to be my y values. So the plot is just going to appear down here on the x-axis. Um, and I'm going to, wait, do I have my parentheses messed up here? Okay. And then I'm going to display it as red dots. Um, and then I've got to do plt.show again. So when I run this, Oh, zero is here. Okay, so we've added a red dot at all of the indices where we think we detected a step. Um, this is not terribly useful, however, because it would be nice to put the dots actually on the peaks themselves. So what that means is that at each of these indices, we need to get the y value from our original data at that index. So let's go ahead and add that. One thing that you could do would be to add your own for loop here. Um, well, we don't even need a for loop. We could just use a comprehension. So we could say peaks y equals, and let's, uh, our original data here was our accelerometer x data from 400 to 600. So we're getting that slice. <clears throat> um, and now we have the slice. I want to access a particular index for each index in the peaks x data. So that what I'm doing here is I'm looping over each of these indices, and then I'm using it to access um, the actual y value from my original data here. Um, so now that I'm doing that, I don't need, well, let's evaluate that. So now I don't need these artificial y values anymore. Now I can say peaks y, and I can run it again. Um, and that's pretty good. You'll notice here that our plot is still displaying the original peak values that we calculated because we didn't reset it. So if you want to, uh, you can go back up here. This is rerunning it. I'm going to expand it. And now I'm going to go here and rerun the full 
list of things. Great, so now we see where our peaks are located. Um, and that's great, except that this is a little bit awkward. So I wanna refactor it so our get peaks returns both the X and the Y. So let's take our peaks Y list comprehension um, and let's put it here, whoops, wah, and let's put it here at the end right before we return it. So now instead of, instead of this, a slice of the X acceleration data, um, what we really wanna use is data, which was our input list that contains the data that we're trying to find peaks in. Um, and now that looks a lot cleaner. Um, and now I can return peaks X and peaks Y, uh, one after the other. And so now I can have peaks X, peaks Y like that. And so now everything's like a little bit cleaner and nicer. Um, and the, but the output should be the same. All right, so this is pretty decent, um, except some of this data you can tell, uh, even though there's a peak, it's probably not actually a step. Like I'm guessing this little guy right here, I'm guessing I didn't take two rapid steps one after the other here and here. Um, so you might wanna play around and run this code on different input data sets, because we started with that one where I'm running, um, but I have a whole bunch of other ones where I'm sort of more wandering than running. And in the next step, we'll think about how to improve this code.